Good evening, everyone. So you already know I'm Shah Lakhtar. I'm doing astrophysics PhD in the University of New South Wales. So I'll be giving some small telescope workshop here, but we have more volunteers here. Domenico Romano, Hello. Elida, Matthew Freeman. They will be also helping you with the telescope. But before seeing the telescope, I would like to show you a few of the slides. OK. Yeah, I'll be showing you this telescope, how does it work. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So it's just a dummy, just for a dummy. So the basic thing is to see the farthest thing to your closer. That's it. That's the telescope works. But we do use it for night sky that we are going to do today. So who can actually think of this, you know, farther to nearest thing? Of course, someone works with lenses, and he was a spectacle maker. So his name is Hans Lippershey. And as long as I remember, he was working with spectacle makers, and he brought on two spectacle lenses together. And he was seeing that he can see the further things closer to him. And so he has got the patent, but there are a few other spectacle makers who have got that. From the history, we know that maybe they have got this. But he is the first one who thought about telescope how to make it to work. Galileo Galilei, in 1609, he is the first one who point at the skyward, our telescope, to see the night sky. Then it went a bit more advanced with the double convex lenses and convex eyepieces. It was thinking, so Johannes Kepler made it to even advance. Then Sir Isaac Newton started thinking of the reflection, how the mirror can be used in the telescope to see more. So how does light work? If I start talking about this, we see each other when the light is on, but we cannot really see each other when the light is off, can we? We can see each other when the light is off? Yes? No, we cannot. Yes, we cannot. So. Before you are coming, how about I start drawing? That's even more. Yeah. The marker is here? OK. So we all look at the mirrors, right? And there's a flat mirror. There's a flat mirror there. And you're standing here. Say you are an arrow. Light falls on you. And those light rays go straight towards this flat mirror and come back towards you again parallelly, right? So you see yourself better. But what happens if this is a mirror like, concave mirror like this? So we have one prop, a big parabolic mirror in our workshop. We will be going outside and then we'll be seeing that later. But I'll just let you know that how does it work with the light? So I've got some equipment here. I've got a light source, and I've got nice light here. And I really like colorful light, so here is light. And it goes parallelly, right? It's going at the moment parallelly. So you can see here. And when I put this on here, what happens? It's going to reflect on this mirror, and because it's a convex lens, con concave mirror, it's going to point towards here with a single point. So it's something like this. That's the concave mirror, and we have got light source from here, see? And it's going parallelly as before, but it's coming back in a single point. And that single point where it's all the light is coming back and converging is called the focal point, right? That's for the mirror. What happens if we have a convex lens? That's actually a refracting convex lens. So it will go past this one. Again, it's converging all the rays together towards a converging point for the focal point. Right? So that's the one that I was talking about, concave mirror. And then convex lens. We have, the, again, the focal point. 
and so you can see how it's working. Light rays are going first through this, and it has a con convex surface, and it's all the lights are converging in a point, which is the focal point. So now we know that, OK, light is coming through. The parallel light is focusing somewhere. Now, how can we form the image, right? So you can follow here. So you have the object. And the light is falling on the object and going parallel to that, to that convex lens. And it's also going through the lens. And it's meeting at point where is the focal point. And all the lines are going back, converging at a point where you can see the image back. So this is the object and the image that the lens is creating for you. But you can see that because of this focal point, and where I'm keeping the object from the focal point, it depends on the object size, the image of the object size, and also the image will be inverted or not. So the, we can see the image is inverted, which we will be seeing in the telescope outside. That now you know that why the image will be inverted, right? And depending on this, I would like to show you how the image is forming in the telescope, how the telescope is working. So I'll go back to this side. And you can see there is arrow sign, right? And if you can remember, the black arrow is on your left side, and the white arrow is on up, up, upside, right? And I'm going to make an image of the same arrow on that plate using this convex lens, double convex lens. So I've got a double convex lens in here, there, in the middle, right? And this is my image plane, where I want to form the image of the same one object. If that double arrow is my object, I want to form an image of the same object on this image plate. Now, I already know the focal length where the focal point is making, right? This is the focal length from the lens to the focal point is the focal length. So I already know the focal length of this, tele, uh, this convex lens, but I can also measure it from this meter scale from here. So I'll try to form it here and I'll be showing it to you more. So I'm trying to form in the image. So if you guys can see this, it's really bl blurry at the moment. And it's getting clearer. Can you see? Yes? Is it good enough to see? Yeah? So why do you see the arrows at the moment? Same thing? How about you tell me right side or left side, upward or downward? Okay. Okay. The black one is facing the left, right? Okay. How about the image, the real object? Are they on the same side or not? No. That means the image is inverted, right? Because of this lens, it has gone inverted, OK? So now we know that, OK, this is 100 millimeter is the focal length for this lens. Now we can change the, this is called the object distance. From the lens to the object is called the object distance. If we change the object distance, and if we know the focal length of the uh, lens, we can actually tell where I can form this image, right? Now I'm really bringing it closer and closer and closer. What do you see? Is that blurry or clear? Blurry, OK. Tell me when it becomes clearer to you. Is it clear? Not yet? It's getting clearer? 
It's getting bigger. That's one point. Yes. Very big. Okay. Okay. It's getting bigger, but it's getting clearer, right? At some point, it was clear. Okay, it's really, really big, right? So what we can see, if we change the di uh, distance, like the object distance is smaller, then we get a bigger picture, bigger image, and it's further away from the lens, right? This is what actually we do with the telescope. That's all we do. So I'll go more. So you can see, we'll be changing the eyepieces in our telescope, and you can see the image is bigger, or smaller, depending on the focal point. So what happens, we see it inverted, but we see each other in a, like the way we are, right? We don't see each other inverted. The reason is, our eyes also work as lenses, and it inverts that image, but our brain inverts it back, so that the final image, we can see it clearly. Okay, so that's a little bit of trivia for small people. <coughs> now, how a basic telescope works, I have already demonstrated that a bit, but it's, a, it's basically a combination of lenses and reflectors, or like convex lens or concave lens. So the light is coming from this side, I don't know what is this, but the light is coming come from this side, goes through the lens, and it converges, and there is another lens, which is the eyepiece lens, and it makes it parallel so that you can see the light or the image. The one we have today in the foyer, that's a Smith Cassegrain telescope. Why this is called Cassie Smith telescope and Cassegrain telescope? because it has got a primary mirror, which is spherical, and so the light goes through this character plate, which is called Smith character plate, and it goes down there on the spherical primary mirror, and it comes back to the secondary mirror, which is a convex mirror, and then it goes to this hole to the eyepiece, and then we see it in the eyepiece. So you can see that we are not really looking through this telescope like this, Instead, the telescope is like this, and there's an eyepiece where it is reflecting back, and you can see from here. Something like this, the one we have. And the second telescope that is on the roof is this one. So you have got the worksheet with you, and we are going to see a few of the night objects tonight, and how you need to fill out, you just need to see the color of it or what you can see, can you see any craters or not, all these things, and just write them down in the blank lines. Yes? Circle four, very good question. Circle four, just draw, okay? You see the moon, just try to draw the moon, okay? If you're seeing the Saturn, you try to draw the Saturn. The objects we are going to show you today is the moon, with you can see the craters as well, hopefully. The Saturn, so you see the moon, the Saturn, maybe you can see some of the planets of the Saturn as well, it's a planet. Jupiter, maybe. We'd like to see the Alpha Centauri. <coughs> now, Alpha Centauri is the nearest star for our solar system. Why I say solar system? Because for our planet Earth, can anyone tell me which, is the st which star is the closest star for planet Earth? Oh, you might be, of course you know this. <laughs> That's why we are talking about the closest star that we can see in the night sky for our solar system, and that is Alpha Centauri. Though this is not the closest star for our solar system, the closest for, uh, one is called Proxima Centauri, but we cannot really see that clearly. So that's the Alpha Centauri, the bright one from the Southern Cross that you see. And Trevor was talking about 88 constellations. Southern Cross is the smallest among all those 88 constellations in our night sky. So the best way to remember, you see the Southern uh, Cross, 
and then you can see two pointer stars, and the brighter one is the Alpha Centauri. And that Southern Cross, inside it, you can see that there is a st star clusters that really very bright and colorful, and we call it jewel box. It just looks like jewel box, and we are going to see that too tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.